Okay, welcome to another Orbiter Space Flight Simulator video. Now in this video I want to take another look at the upcoming version of Orbiter. And from all appearances it's going to be called Orbiter 2015. Obviously we're getting very close to the end of uh, the year 2014. And uh, Martin indicated obviously that uh, Orbiter 2014 is not going to happen. But uh, we'll probably be looking at Orbiter 2015. Okay, so uh, I haven't had a chance to spend a lot of time with this, so I'm going to be sort of learning a little bit about this with you guys. But I did make a few notes here, some things that I've observed. So let me go ahead and switch camera views to the big view here. And one thing I'll note, uh, one thing I'll note too, and this isn't terribly relevant, but I actually wasn't able to record this any sooner because when I was using the inline client, um, it was flickering so bad when I was recording that it was, the video was just unusable. But fortunately, last night, uh, Jamarik, I, or Jamarnik, I forget how to pronounce his name. Anyway, he's the developer of the D3D9 client. He updated his D3D9 client. And now that I'm using the uh, D3D9 client, I'm able to record videos again. And there's no flickering. Uh, so first thing, we're obviously looking at KSC and... This uh, has been greatly enhanced um, if you compare to the standard look at, you know, how Orbiter uh, 2010 looked. Even if you updated the tiles and everything for Orbiter 2010, this still is quite a bit better. Uh, Martin said he's been spending a lot of time lately, uh, specifically in and around the Cape Canaveral area, trying to make it <clears throat> look as good as he possibly can just to kind of showcase what's possible with uh, the new level of detail. I believe this is level 19 in Orbiter 2010. I want to say level tw uh, 14 was was the highest. Uh, and with regards to KSC, a very important update is that you can now use it. <laughs> if you go back to my March video, or actually I think it was April 2014, if you remember, I pointed out that the the runway at Cape Canaveral was so lumpy that you couldn't even fly down the runway. Uh, it, it would just, if you, you know, went full throttle on the main, you know, you would just, the, the runway was buckled so badly that you would literally bounce up and down as you were going down the runway. Now, we all know that runways aren't perfectly flat. They all have some curve, convex, something to them, but it was just, it was so bad that it was just absolutely unplayable. It's still not perfect. Um, I still see a few bumps here and there, but it's a whole lot smoother than it was, and it's certainly possible to use it now. So that's one of the uh, that's one of the updates that I've noticed. I haven't really seen any updates, um, or I haven't noted any updates to the Delta Glider cockpit, but <clears throat> this uh, I, again, I haven't spent enough time with it to really be able to pinpoint small things that might have changed. But this to me looks like the same cockpit that we had back in, um, you know, again, April or May or whenever it was that I was last looking at this. Uh, another thing that I noticed that changed for the better is the bases on the moon, or at least the base on the moon, the default base, Brighton Beach. If you recall back in my April video that I showed, <clears throat> Brighton Beach was actually floating above the surface by uh, two or three kilometers, but if I, if you look at it now, I uh, just switched camera, uh, switched vessels over to the shuttle A, which is on the moon. It's still not perfect, but, <clears throat> and you'll see here, but it's better. It, it, when I say it's not perfect, you can see that the landing pads are sort of, uh, they almost look like moon dust has been, <laughs> has like blown over top of them, like shifting sand dunes or something. And I'm also seeing a little artifacting there in the background. I'm guessing the video recorder got that. But it's better than it was, um, at least now. And here I'm seeing too, you can see the mountain in the background. There's It's just missing textures there. But you can see now at least that the base is on the surface, more or less. I think there's still a few areas here and there where it's got issues. But, but that's a huge improvement, you know, at least, uh, you know, because before... Brighton Beach was literally, it was like two kilometers floating above the moon's surface. It was pretty bad. And I think Martin even said somewhere <clears throat> in the uh, thread, that that's a long thread, so I haven't read everything. But I seem to recall him saying something like, you know, 
this is not going to be released until these types of things are fixed. Obviously, they're not going to. He's not going to put out a Orbiter 2015 with these sorts of problems. Um, otherwise, I think most of the patching stuff has been pretty well addressed. Uh, when I say patching, I mean if, again going back to the old video when I would kind of do this, tilt the camera around the moon. There were just huge holes in the moon. Um, and I'm, I'm not seeing that anymore, but there is still visual stuff that's not pretty, just stuff of appearing and disappearing. I don't know if that will <clears throat> be enough of an issue to get fixed or not, because typically, you know, ideally when you're flying, you want to fly, you know, from the cockpit view and you're not going to be, you'll, you only need enough visual to see what's around you when you sort of do these sort of out of body experience type of views. It's not a very realistic, uh, example of what you're going to see when you're actually flying. Um, so let, let me zoom in a little bit. One thing I noticed that uh, was kind of interesting, I was kind of warping time forward to the 100,000 just to kind of see how the shadows would play out. So let me do that again here. It, it, again, of course, as the moon you know moves and, and rotates, the, the sun is going to be in a different position. You can sort of see the shadows moving across the uh, hills here. So let me go for a faster time warp see kind of what that looks like and of course the moon having such a slow rotation cycle you know one day on the moon is about 14 days so it takes a while even at 100,000 time warp for the sun to kind of get into position there where you can start seeing the shadows form I that's a little thing and maybe other people don't really care about that but I think it's pretty cool because you know again going back to orbiter 2010 everything was flat so there was no there were no shadows really it was basically it was either lit or it was dark, and that was it. But now you can see, you can get into areas behind these hills where it's, you know, it's you're in the shadow of the hill. So that's kind of cool. Uh, let me switch back over to KSC. Um, of course, when I switch cameras there, you can see, or when I switched uh, from one body to another, you could see all that redrawing stuff happening. Not a big deal there. Uh, something else I put in my notes is that uh, the Orbiter documentation um, has not yet been updated. Of course, I wouldn't expect it to be, but just as a note, if you try to go looking into the docs <clears throat> for any reason, you're going to see that uh, nothing has changed. There actually was something else I wanted to show on the uh, Shuttle A. If you switch over to the uh, 3D cockpit, this uh, 3D, uh, rather 2D panel, I'm sorry, this 2D panel is quite a bit different than the Shuttle A panel that was in uh, that was in Orbiter 2010. However, it's not completely brand new because you could actually have updated Orbiter 2010 to have this 2D panel. And I guess probably the big deal here is like this eight ball type of thing. Um, that was that was new. And I remember if you updated Orbiter 2010, I think it was Orbiter 2010 P1 or P2. I'm actually forgetting the the patch numbers. But if there was there was another like unofficial update past that one, and if you did that update, then you would see this version of the shuttle A. <clears throat> but it looks like, but it looks like this is going to be the standard uh, shuttle, uh, the standard 2D panel in Orbiter, presumably 2015 is what it's going to be called. Um, all right, so let me see if there's much else. Uh, you know, again, I'm kind of learning some of this stuff as I go through this video because I haven't spent a ton of time with it. I think I talked a little bit in March, April, how how this view has changed. This actually does have something new about it that I've noticed. At least I didn't see it before, so I think it's new. <clears throat> if you right click on this panel, you now have the option to have it show as uh, labels only. And I don't remember seeing this option before. So if you want to have a more minimalistic view and have this up all the time, you can have label view only. These uh, views over here on the left and right can be changed. I've got one set for frame rate just so I can kind of pay attention to how, <clears throat> you know, what the frame rate's like. But you can turn those off. Uh, you can turn off the whole uh, panel up here. Just put it on hide or auto hide so that goes away. The info bars can also be hidden so that you don't have any, you know, obstructions. That would be preferable if you're doing recordings, playbacks, things like that. You don't want a bunch of cluttered technical information. So that's a little bit different. The only thing um, that I actually don't care for myself is I've been very 
used to pressing the letter I on the keyboard to toggle some of the information displays, and that's now gone. Apparently, that's actually been gone uh, with certain updates in Orbiter 2010, certain unofficial updates with Orbiter 2010. <clears throat> but I'm actually sorry to see that go, because I use that all the time, where I would just press I to uh, be able to toggle the frame rate on and off, you know, the information. Um, as far as the uh, other visuals go, I can't really say that I've seen any updates. Um, you know, you, again, if you refer back to the video that I showed earlier this year with the with the mountain views and everything, all that's about the same. I haven't seen any significant changes there. But the really big change is just, you know, the tile set <clears throat> here around Florida. Uh, I should mention that this update is a 2.1 gigabyte update, something like that. So it's not small, <laughs> and the new version of Orbiter is going to be pretty huge. That, but there is discussion about how they're going to do it. Uh, I think there's going to be a functional version of Orbiter that's only going to be a few hundred megabyte or maybe a gigabyte. But if you want to, if you want it to really look good, you're going to want to get all the the tile sets and everything. That's going to increase your Orbiter um, installation by you know dozens of gigabytes, pro probably over a hundred gig when it's all said and done. But it's really looking uh, quite fantastic, so looking forward to seeing kind of what m more will be coming in the in the future, uh, in the future updates. So that's all I have for now. Again, I just wanted to kind of show off some of the new stuff here. You know, the runway is now usable. The, uh, the bases aren't floating two kilometers above the surface anymore. Some of the holes that I was seeing in the old textures appear to be gone. And so, yeah, I think we're, I think we're making good progress. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how all the add-ons um, progress. There's a lot of add-ons that a lot of us use that really we can't have Orbiter without those add-ons. So if they don't get updated, then you know it's going to be hard to uh, it's going to be hard to make that transition. You know, for example, burn time calculator, um, arrow break MFD. That's that's a huge one. Burn time calculator. Um, all these, you know, Base Sync, Wide Awake International, the Carl Sagan Space Center, you know, all these different updates. If, if, I'm, I'm very curious how long it's going to take some of those core, core things to get updated. Because I think there are actually still people that use the Orbiter 2006, or at least have it installed as a separate installation for no other reason than some of the updates that they knew and loved never got, never got addressed in Orbiter 2010, so they don't work with Orbiter 2010. I'm a little worried about that. Um, for my own sake, because I've been, you know, I, I, I've got, I don't have tons of add-ons, but I've got quite a few add-ons that I really rely on. So I would hate to make that transition to Orbiter 2015 and then like no longer be able to use IMFD because the developer has fallen off the face of the earth or something and isn't doing anything more with it. I don't know. We'll see. So check for uh, links down in the description below and I will see you in the next video.